it, it's not, it's, let me, it's, it's beyond that key. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do mm-hmm. it to a bunch of black girls. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gave my respect. That gave my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm-hmm. here in, yeah. in, in Colorado, wherever. She mm-hmm. did it to some girls <laughs> from, from LSU yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs mm-hmm. and put them on her knee and spanked them. Spanked them. Everybody hit the like button, man. What he said, what Paul Pierce said is so crazy because look, I'm gonna show you the 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 players of the year every year in college basketball, okay? 95, the first year they gave the award, Rebecca Lobo won it. Okay, <laughs> a white girl. The first year they gave the award, Rebecca Lobo won it. The second year they gave the award, Jennifer Rosati won it. The third year, Karen Walters. The first three years they gave this award, a white girl won it. 95, 96, and 97. Players of the year in women's college basketball. And this idiot is acting like. <laughs> this idiot's acting like. <laughs> Caitlin Clark is the first white girl to dominate college basketball. So then black girls won it for three years. Then look, 2001, Ruth Riley, she won. And guess what? After Ruth Riley won in 2001, Sue Bird won in 2002. You know, Sue Bird, she's married to, um, what's that chick? R- Rapino, Megan Rapino. And guess what? After 2002 and 2003, Diana Taurasi won player of the year. And guess what? A black girl won. Then another black girl won. Simone Augustus. Then Simone Augustus was a beast. Black girls started winning. Okay. Go ahead, black girls. Y'all won a couple of years. Y'all won like five. Y'all won. Y'all good. Salute the black girls winning the award. Brittany Griner. And then guess what happened? A white girl won three years in a row. From 2014 to 2015. This white girl right here, Brianna Stewart, she won four national titles, four Final Four MVPs, and three Players of the Year. Four national titles, four straight national titles, four straight Final Four MVPs, and three National Players of the Year. Kelsey Plum won the next year. Who's Kelsey Plum? She's the girl that scored the most points in college basketball history until Caitlin Clark beat a record. And you got Asia Wilson. Then you had Megan Gustafson. Sabrina Ionescu, Paige Book. Yo, look. They're acting like what? Caitlin Clark is doing as a white girl, beating up on some black girls in basketball is so crazy when literally 2019, 2020, and 2021, the players of the year were white girls. 2019, 2020, and 2021, the last five years, 40 years, listen, let me just, Let me just break this down for you. In the last 10 years, from 2014 to 2024, 11 years. In the last 11 years, only two black girls have won player of the year. In the last 11 years, 
only two black girls have won player of the year. That's more what this is about. Press one. Press one. That's more what this is about. In the last 11 years, including this year, because this year Clayton Clark won it, but they don't have it on here. In the last 11 years, only two black girls have won player of the year. That's more what this is about, this hatred of Caitlin Clark is, than, than, than the fact that Caitlin Clark. Not, it's, let me, it's, it's beyond that, Key. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do mm -hmm. it to a bunch of black girls. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it well, like, oh. <laughs> that gained my respect. That gained my respect. I, I hear you. You're like right. That's like, oh, she didn't do this. To, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm -hmm. here in, yeah. in Colorado, wherever. She did it to some <laughs> girls from, from LSU yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defend <laughs> Yo, let me tell you why white girls do better at basketball than white men. I want to hear from y'all. Why do y'all think that, and hit the like button, why do y'all think that white girls do better at basketball than white men? Yeah, man, the male game is played above the rim. The male game is based on speed and jumping. It's based on, you know, physical attributes to a degree. The women's game, since they don't play, they don't they don't rely on physical. They rely on craftiness and skills, man. When you a girl, you gotta be really good, man, to to um to put the ball in the basket. Cause you can't just jump up and dunk that motherfucker. And you can't just blow past somebody. You can't just cross somebody up and blow past somebody because women's bodies aren't made for that. Their bodies aren't made for that. They're just not made for that. They made the le liberals will let you lie to their lie to everybody's faces, and nobody will ever challenge them. No sports analyst is going to be like, "Wait a second, man! What Caitlin Clark is doing is great. She's." The don't get me wrong, she's the best to ever do it. But white girls been dominating college basketball 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2019, 2020. This girl, this girl was so good, they let her speak at Kobe's funeral. Press one. Remember this girl? This was the girl that Kobe was um, on her job. And when she and when Kobe died, they let this girl speak at Kobe's funeral. Sabrina Ionescu, she's the one who did the three-point contest versus Steph Curry at the All-Star game. They trying to act like Caitlin Clark. They hating on Caitlin Clark. No, nah, they hating on white girls. Cause white girls been dominating this shit. I showed you the speech Paige Beckers had to give when she won. Y'all remember last night? I showed you the speech she had to give when she won the award. She had to basically apologize for winning the award. Um, with the light that I have now, um, as a white woman who leads a black-led sport. Um, and celebrated here. I want to show a light on black women. Um, they don't get the media coverage that they deserve. I'm sorry, y'all. This is so cringy, man. <laughs> I'm going to take the earphone out. This is so cringy. I can't even listen to this shit. Y'all, I, I got to listen to it, but I don't have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, they 
they've given so much to this sport and the community and society as a whole, and their value is un undeniable. Um, and the WNBA last season, the postseason awards, 80% of the winners were black, but they got half the amount of coverage as a white athlete. So I think it's time for change. Um, sports media holds the key to storylines. Sports, <laughs> sports media and sponsors tell us who is valuable. And you have told the world that I matter today and everyone who voted, thank you. Um, but I think we should use this power together to also celebrate black women. So to Maria Taylor, Robin Roberts, Maya Moore, Odyssey Alexander, to all the incredible black women in my life, on my teams, to Breonna Taylor and all the lives lost, and to those names who have not yet learned, but I hope to share. I stand behind you and I will continue to follow follow you and follow your lead and fight for you guys. So I just want to say thank you for everything. Oh, God. That was so cringe, man. Like, that was the cringiest shit I've heard in my life, man. That white girl, this white girl right here, player of the year, she'll probably be player of the year next year when Caitlin leaves. Most likely she'll be player of the year next year when Caitlin leaves, unless they decide to give it to a black girl for sympathy. Unless they feel sorry and give it to a black girl, she's going to win it next year because she's coming back and Caitlin's going to be gone. That that white girl is from this town. I want to show you something, how crazy that shit is. That white girl is from this town. Minnetonka, Minnesota. The racial makeup of Minnetonka, Minnesota, where that white girl is from, is 90% white, 3.7 African American. 90% white and 3.7 African American. 3.7% African American. Man, that's got to be a safe. That's a safe city, man. God damn. And she thanked black women. She thanked black women. It wasn't it probably wasn't a black woman that helped her was a that helped her along her journey and and it probably wasn't one black woman that helped her along her along her journey. That's disrespectful, man. What do you guys think? To come from a town that's 90% white, she thanked black women for, for getting her there. Ungrateful.